Hello everyone. Today we are talking about symmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption means that encryption of a plain text and decryption of the cipher text are done with the same key. This is the main difference to asymmetric encryption in which two different keys are used. If you want to know more about asymmetric encryption, you can click the link on the top right corner of the video. Usually the decryption algorithm is the inverse of the encryption algorithm. In symmetric encryption, we are dealing with block ciphers and stream ciphers. Let's first look at block ciphers. A block cipher, as the name suggests, splits the plain text into blocks of certain size and encrypts the blocks. Let's look at an example. If we want to encrypt the plain text Hello World with a 12-bit block size, we first have to convert the letters and the space in between to ASCII characters. Next, we convert them to bytes to arrive at the bit stream for this plain text. Just as we do when we encode something with base 64, we now take blocks of 12 bits, remember our block size. We are 6 bits short, uh, which will be padded. That just means that we fill them up with padding bits in order to reach our complete 12-bit words. Note that our possible alphabet now consists of 4096 words, since 2 to the power of 12 equals 4096. A block cipher can be implemented using hardware, which is faster but less flexible, or software, which is slower but more flexible. In order to encrypt the blocks, we have a P-box and an S-box. The P-box deals with permutation, which means to rearrange the order of the bits, and the S-box deals with substitution, which means to exchange bits with different bits. A hardware P-box might look something like this. You have 8 bits coming in, which are permuted to change the arrangement. For example, taking the number 5, which are from top to bottom, these bits, would result in these bits, which represent the number 48. The S-box, on the other hand, changes the value of the incoming bits. Let's look at this example here, where we again want to put uh, the value 5 through the S-box. That means that the sixth circuit is activated since we start counting from 0. This circuit leads to the third input of the second decoder, which corresponds to the number 2 and the bits 0, 1, 0. Note that we use a P-box within the S-box. An S-box has to fulfill certain properties. It must adhere to non-linearity, which means that no outgoing bit should linearly depend on input bits. Completeness means that every outgoing bit should be dependent on the input bits and the symmetric key, and the strict avalanche criterion states that a change in one input bit should change about 50% of the output bits. In practice, these operations are not done once, but several rounds using uh, several round keys that have to differ from each other. The round keys are, however, generated from the symmetric key. A possible hardware solution, a so-called product cipher, since the cipher text is the product of multiple rounds, might look like this, where you have a P-box followed by a couple of S-boxes and so on. In software, you would implement it via loops. There is much more to cover uh, regarding block ciphers, which I will do in another video. I will present the Feistel network and the different modes of operations, but for now I will continue with stream ciphers. Stream ciphers work bit by bit and also via an encryption box that has the symmetric key and an initializing vector as input. Just as we have seen with the round keys, a constant pseudo-random and arbitrary long key stream generated from the symmetric key is needed, which is XORed with the plain text's bits in order to generate a cipher text. The security of a stream cipher depends on the key stream generator and for each new message a new key must be generated. I will shortly illustrate why, but you can also look at my video on why web sucks in order to understand it in more detail. You can click the link on the top right corner of the video to get there. Let's say you manage to get two cipher texts. If you XOR them, what you really do is you have message 1, XOR the key, XOR message 2, XOR the same key. This results in both plain text XORed with each other. Why? Because any number XOR twice just eliminates itself which is what we did since we used the same key twice. An attacker who is able to plant a known plaintext into the encryption program can now decrypt any ciphertext since he knows his own plaintext and both resulting ciphertexts. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover, like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.